out of last year. We're going to have our final selection by Lady Cooper at this time, followed by our preacher of the hour, Brother Michael, from Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church, where Ken of Christ II is the pastor. Amen.
through all the means. I know I can be what I want to be. If I work hard, I'll be where I want to be. I know I can be what I want to be. If I work hard, I'll be where I want to be. I'll be where I want to be. Be, be, boys and girls, this is nothing. Anything in the world, and God trusts that all the tech doctor may be an anxious, but nothing comes easy. It takes much practice. Wise words from the evangelical lyricist, not Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But now, don't y'all really get at me before you get into that. Don't start acting like you only listen to Take Me to the Kingdom of Heaven, Jackson Radio, or the Spotify. Some of y'all another church go with some Johnny Taylor and some Mike Brothers and some Bobby Womack. So we don't talk about hip hop. Why I, I, I leave up alone because you see every genre and every other music is a little spicy at times with the lyrics. But back to the sermon at hand again, my brothers and sisters, I've had the question. Are you really pushing me? Now, I hope y'all have closed y'all Bibles or y'all Bible apps, whatever y'all may use. But you see, the title Ecclesiastes comes from a Greek word, <laughs> ecclesia, yes, which means or translates rather assembly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it makes perfect sense that the author identified himself in Ecclesiastes back in the first chapter, the first verse by the Hebrew word Kohelet which translated as preaching. And despite leaving on this rather mysterious name to indicate his identity evidence within the book, I um, may suggest that King Solomon authored Ecclesiastes. Listen, I'm just a brother from the hood, so in your leisure you can read the entire book for yourself, man, in case you may have a different perspective on the matter. But getting back to this third chapter, it tells us in this first verse that to every there is a what? Okay, so you all remember. So to every there is a season. And I don't know about you, but I didn't wait until it's the lions and this the season. I yes, to a championship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that's my only request for today. But you see, if you're really out there, you should be. Uh, you must walk with your life, not with a Craps in the barrel mentality will walk around jealous of someone else's life just because you think, keyword, think, that they're doing a little bit better than you in life. But, but real disciples of Christ are pushing be within the purpose journey through life with the mentality and maturity to know how to wait their time. Just because you're taking some ill, some losses in life today does not mean that a dove is on its way. It's not on its way. Just because your friends are successful in their endeavors and you're on the struggle with us right now, their success cannot and will not in no way hinder your own future success. Am I talking to anybody in here today? No rock and roll you eat today turn into hibachi tomorrow. You might be. Rocking some sketches today, but the sketches turn into some ballad and or some retro or whatever you rock it tomorrow. You see, you may be catching the bus right now, but keep you pushing your purpose and bus ride and turn into you with my heart. Yes, sir. Just because you may be feeling what you want to do right now in life. That does not give an excuse to quit and give up on your dreams. You better keep on pushing, keep on moving, and keep on trying. How would I keep up today? Yeah. When tomorrow will be my breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Steven Spielberg, y'all know Steven Spielberg. Yes, sir. But he was rejected twice by the University of Southern California School of Cinematic Arts. Aside from that, he also struggled with dyslexia, which made it hard for him to cope with school. Yet, somebody say yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yet this same Steve Spielberg has won 11 Emmys, three Oscars, seven Golden Globes, and he's 
one of the most successful directors of today's time, even though we're not building, building would be for museums. Thomas Edison. The electrician, okay, I got lots of help in here today. So praise the Lord. Thomas Edison was told by his teachers that he was too stupid to learn anything. Mm. In fact, they took him 1,000 unsuccessful attempts before he successfully invented this thing we call the light bulb. Michael Jordan, I hope you didn't know LeBron has his name. There's no time for me. I don't know. But Michael Jordan was, was cut from his high school basketball team. Yeah, six championships and five in the East later, Jordan became arguably one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He was arguably in the parking lot after this. Byron Brooks, as we stated by my brother, was born in prison. Yes, sir. At one time, he was homeless and he used to sleep in parks, abandoned buildings, and bus stops. He used to own the door to eat sleep for them. I know y'all out here eating good, many hanas for many young, the rice, and all that good stuff, but the closest thing Byron would get to many hanas was some monkey heads, rice, and some cut up cheeseburgers. But, um, while in high school, Byron filled both the ninth and tenth grade. Yet today, again, he stands before you with several degrees and certificates from several institutions that people say he never. Yes, Criteria or look the part to be a, a minister of the gospel is this good preacher standing before you today. Right. You see, to everything there is a season, and to a time to every. Oh, y'all gotta help me. Yeah. And a time to every. And a time to every purpose. And I have to just be patient and be thankful for your season is coming up. Somebody already hit me with an um, alarm telling me I'm, I'm talking too 
much, but you're still not telling me how pain is to be closer to pushing people. We're just hitting y'all. I would like to make a notion that pain is one of the most beneficial components that can enter into the life of the disciple. Now, right there, some of you all may be saying, yeah, that's that fickle stuff. I see what he was talking about when he was talking about fear. But this dude must be out of his mind. I say this because pain has a way of getting our undivided attention. Don't believe me? Check this out. I'm going to need your help. By show of hands, how many of you have seen a movie called Avengers Endgame? Okay, well, for those of you who haven't, if you haven't seen it by now, you just don't care. So, spoiler alert. I'm going to take you through two changes of the movie. First, there's a scene where Captain America, Black Widow, and Ant Man make Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, a visit, trying to convince him that they can undo the snap that raised half of the universe's population back. Um, and Infinity War being time travel. But to do this, they needed his help to their surprise. Y'all yeah. know what Iron Man did? He refused to pay period any attention. Now yeah. stick with me, I'm kind of going somewhere with this. Now fast forward through the movie, Tony, he's washing dishes, and while washing dishes, he uh, picks up a picture of him and Spider-Man pre-Infinity War. I mean that at that moment, just the sight of that picture, I am going to relive the pain he felt when Spider-Man dispersed the dust right within his arms just five years ago. And you see, the power of that pain brought his attention back to the theory of time travel. Um, and, and eventually they did win the day. Now some may have missed it, but that's another reason to give God some praise whether you're an Avengers fan or not, because just how pain lost his age of mind. So it's a time travel. How many know that pain has a way of getting our undivided attention and turning back to God whenever we may have consciously or subconsciously turned our best to Him? Yeah. Uh, you see, pain has a way of cleaning our spiritual and giving us the desire to finally listen to what God has to say. But again, you don't have to believe me. Again, I'm just a young preacher from the but I am confident that the Israelites young people can show you the validity of my statement. Just, just take a stroll in the Old Testament in your, in your spare time. You see, you should always have your own personal Bible study so that you continue to grow in your relationship with Christ. Don't just take my word for it, but, but get me back on point. Pain has a way of humbling you. And striving to be humble. Keyword striving. Anybody tell you they humble, you might want to look out for them. But you should strive. Yes, striving to be humble is necessary in the English you. You see, it, it forces you to take a self evaluation and not just a, in a physical form, but it forces you as a disciple of Christ to really give yourself a spiritual self evaluation. You see, I still remember those days when I had to bathe myself to the best of my abilities in the men's restroom at Henry Ford College with fear of someone walking in and catching me in the act. I, I remember it being so embarrassed to go to work because I knew my hygiene was not up to par and my uniform eventually became filthy, which caused a lot of unneeded tension. But, but, but my pride wouldn't allow me to tell anyone about my situation. I was at a point in life of my own my own mother, family, friends turned their backs on me. And to add on to this young man, I had just recently acknowledged my calling into ministry. Wow. Now, do you mind if I tell you all what was the true pain within my climb towards the Shapir at this point in my life? It was the pain of being ostracized, judged, and talked about by the same people that I thought were in my life to love, encourage, and even mentor. 
pain and reaching out to certain individuals to help me not only prepare to accept my calling, but to also understand and grow into my calling. You see, everybody is called, but we don't all understand my calling, so we need people to help us with this. But, but the pain was not being taken seriously because in their mind, again, I not articulate as someone would off or my, my clothes did not fit as, 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 as someone would. The pain was walking 10 plus miles on his stomach to meet up with individuals that were supposed to be pouring into me. Just to be stood up and hear, oh, I may slip my mind and really never on their minds to begin with. And if I'm being completely honest, y'all mind if I be transparent on some Because I'm not scared of any of you. But if I'm being honest, eventually I allow my flesh to win. And I make the decision to not only walk away from my calling, Reverend Cooper, but, but to walk away from the church entirely. And for weeks, I was gone. Do you know that those were some of the most painful? and grueling weeks that I've ever endured within my life. And I'm working for the good. But let me tell you this. Through that pain, God was able to give my undivided attention. <laughs> Through that pain, I was able to remember that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Through that pain, I was able to realize that all I had
very cool to do the Christian thing when someone is talking to you on the side of the neck. Talking so reckless, and you know that you can put balls on them, but, but you decide to turn the other cheek and let it go because you're too blessed to be stressed. Just for them to both say, that's what I thought. You see, I'm from that way, so the fickle in me is ready to get it cracked any time and any place. But daily, I must crucify that blessed nature within me. You see, pressure has a way of showing you what you need to work on, like. Right? Yes, sir. You see, daily, I'm put under pressure. On a constant basis, we allow ourselves to be pressured by those around us. So, uh, I have to get these new gloves. Uh, with the rose go 10 and the 30 pointers because all my friends were rocking that prom and graduation and I, I just can't be left I, I have to have a suit on seven days of the week no matter where I go I don't care if it's 65 degrees or 95 degrees I don't care if the man is taking me to the king or catch me the records is taking me from the 99 to the 2000 because I am a person yes, because I am a person bro. you know it's, it's a man that like Okay. When I'm out in the world, people need to see my devil's dish to feel like my spirit so that they know that I'm a child of the king. You know something? That's allowing ourselves to be consumed by pressure, and that is definitely not pushing me. Now, though it may not seem like it, Going through pressure does help in your climb towards your purpose. Well, how does it? Y'all ask some wonderful questions. You see, pressure actually shows you that you are not perfect. So, young people, don't stress yourselves out about how society or so called friends view you. Don't allow yourself to be fixated on what you don't have. Because if you do, all you will ever do in life is burn yourself out trying to please some. Let me clean this up. This is you that trying to please men. Y'all can feel it like for me. Now, let me say this to those of you who may be here today or watch me on Facebook Live that are preparing to soon graduate, whether you graduate middle school, high school, they even got graduates from pre K. Ain't that what I was. But, but, but remember this, this is your life. Do not be pressured into making decisions that you're not comfortable with. If you want to go to a trade school, don't allow anyone to pressure you into thinking that's a bad option. One of my good friends from high school work on uh, went to trade school, we were talking, and he makes well over six figures off of that trade school. If you want to go to a community college, go. Again, you're looking at a proud alum community college, the same club, and, and you want to know something? So many people looked at me funny or tried to belittle me for that decision, but it's funny. Those same people were right in my side congratulating me when I was accepted to schools such as Harvard, Michigan, and other institutions that were graduating from that same community college they looked down on. You see, through all the coming pressure, we are able to learn to be content where we are and grateful to God for what we have. Amen. For at the end of the day, God is far ahead of the man to see and where man can only see the worst outcome of every situation. God has already prepared the best outcome and equipped for your keyword, your purpose. For the man who is trusting him. Now, I just need to put you guys in one more secret before I'm done. I know y'all probably tired of hearing my voice if y'all ready for that piece with the pastor. Matter of fact, I might still get a slice if you let me. But you see, the final and most crucial level in this climb towards your pushing P is a word called perseverance. Now, perseverance requires your faith to be fully, somebody say fully, depending on Christ. And I say this because when you're fully dependent on Christ,
when you put all of your faith in practice, you can do nothing but push through the obstacles that are set before you within your journey. And there is no excuse for not pursuing because God has provided us with everything that we need to be successfully in running this race of which we call life. Now, perseverance does not mean to just thug it out in life and try to overcome your obstacles on your own. I'm, trust me, I'm speaking about my experience, but true perseverance requires an understanding that you can't go through your struggles alone. In fact, with the next thing that I'm going to I would like to share this African proverb, of which I try to live by, and it says Ubuntu. You can try to say it. Ubuntu translates as I am, because we are. Look at your neighbor and say, I am. Because we are. Yeah. You look at my neighbor. Look at somebody else and say, I am. Because we are. You see, that is why it is so important to be mindful of who you have within your circle, your gang, your squad, your ride or die, whatever you want to call it, and continually ask God to place you around people that he wants you to be around and that will make perseverance so much easier. Don't go around life surrounding yourself with lackeys or yes men, but surround yourselves with people that's not afraid to tell you when you're wrong or when you need help. You see, Without a spirit of perseverance, you are incapable of withstanding the attacks of the enemy. Yes, sir. Without perseverance, you will always be a victim of statistics. Without perseverance, you are unable to remove the cap that society has placed upon the life you see. I'm reminded of a quote written by that same man we talked about earlier, Thomas Edison. He said that many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Yeah. 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 You see, young people, no matter what situation you may be going through, I am confident that you can push through. I don't care if you're from Mortal Lake Drive or back in the way. I don't care if you're from Hollywood Boulevard and East Morning Charm. I don't care how long the problems may be. I don't care how much the cars are stacked against you. I don't care what your teachers or others may told you what you can't accomplish. Just keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Dr. King. Dr. King was a wonderful man. I believe one of the only mistakes he made in his life was that he played as big fight and we got to talk about that. Dr. King once said it like this. If you can't fly, then run. Yes, sir. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk and crawl for whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. I would say like this, I'm pressing on. The other way. Yeah. New heights I'm gaining. Each and every day. Still prayers. I'm hoping about. Lord, I plant my feet on higher ground. If my granny was here today, she said it like this near the cross. I watch her wait. Holding. Trusting them tears.